the report is starting to look more and more complete. But there is one issue here. I'm not completely sure what the time range is. You can add a date range control from the top menu. Now you can see that it only says auto date range, which is a bit ambiguous. To change this, I can select the default value to the control from the right-hand side panel. If you change it directly from the control, then it will not update as a default one, but would revert back to the original selection when refreshing the report. With this control selected, you can access the date from the right-hand side panel. You can choose any from several predefined options, but you can also use an advanced option. When using an advanced option, you can be very specific about what you want to configure. First, you'd want to set the start date. You can either select a fixed date or set it to be dynamic. For now, I'll set it as a dynamic one. I'm going to use today minus three weeks. These will be full weeks, each starting on Monday, so it will calculate three full weeks from today. And for the end date, I'll set today minus one day, so the date range will include yesterday as the latest date. You can add more than one control to your report. Let's use this drop-down filter as an example. When the control is selected, you can see which data source it's filtering and select which dimension it's using as a control one. As for the metric, you can choose impressions, for example. You can select not to show impressions in control, but impressions could still be used sorting the order of campaigns in the control panel. Let's add a setting to sort by campaign name in ascending order so that we're looking at them from A to Z. Now let's apply this filter. You can see that all the elements on the page are affected by the campaign control. Let's say you don't want to filter everything on this page with this control. In this case, you can select all the elements with the control that you want to filter while holding a Shift key down. Next, select Group from the right-click menu. Now that I have grouped elements with the control, I can change the campaign. As you can see, only the elements within this group have been filtered by the control. It's good to note that a campaign control can't filter campaigns from other data sources. As a rule of thumb, controls can only affect the data source they're associated with, with very few exceptions. And this is how you can apply filters and controls to your report. There is also another way to filter the report. That's done using cross-filtering. First, let's ungroup the elements. To do so, I select the group that I've just created, right-click to see the menu, and then select Ungroup. I select the bar chart, and when I scroll down in the Setup tab, I can check if the cross-filter is enabled. When the cross-filtering is on, I can select one of the campaigns from the bar chart. You can see that all other elements on the page now filter accordingly. If you want it to only affect certain components, you can create a group from elements that you want to be part of the cross-filtering. You can also create filters to only show filter data. I'll cover that in the next video, which goes over more advanced ways of working with Looker Studio.